Hi everybody and uh, welcome to a third video going a little bit deeper into the book of Isaiah with a little look over at some contemporary issues and this one is a very untimely video because in Hope Church we've just finished talking about Babylon, Babylon the Great. There's so much stuff there in Isaiah about Babylon and we've just finished talking about it so that would be a great time to put a video out there so that um, no one can refer to it while we actually do the teaching on it because it's too late but there it is, sorry. Um, so here we are. What we're doing today is we're doing something called um, Working Notes on Babylon. Now, as we've seen, there is a very strong link between the book of Isaiah and the book of Revelation. There's a whole load of them. And if you want to look at Babylon, you can see that really clearly. So there's Isaiah 13, 19, Babylon, the jewel of the kingdoms, the pride and glory of the Babylonians will be overthrown by God like Sodom and Gomorrah. Then if you skip through to Revelation, of course, famously, it's not a physical Babylon. It is a Babylon of the world. He said, the second angel followed and said, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. So we're going to be asking, like, what is Babylon? How can we apply that? And that particularly, how can we make this transition from the physical Babylon to, if you like, the spiritual Babylon? Now, um, I've always had a very strong interest in Babylon, and some of this was almost kind of because of a coincidence um, in my early life. Um, I, I've, I can't really explain this to you, but I've always, uh, for some reason when I was a kid, I had a huge interest in reggae. Um, I, I had like 10 Bob Marley albums and other stuff, you know, like sort of ass and things like that. Anyway. And one of the first ones I got was Exodus, and you can see that there. Um, and Exodus, you know, movement of Jar people. We're leaving Babylon, we're going to the Promised Land. And then it kind of struck me, actually, Babylon, that's that's kind of, yeah, that's me, you know, that's right here in Babylon. Um, and so, but actually, th their idea of how to get out of Babylon was to go to Ethiopia, Um Rastafarians, they thought that Haile Selassie was the Christ. Uh, Haile Selassie didn't think Haile Selassie was the Christ. But I mean, even in Ethiopia, the in Ethiopia, the the sort of Babylon, not of the sort of white system, but of the capitalist system was was overthrown by Mengistu and the communists who actually killed Haile Selassie. So that was another kind of way of getting out of Babylon. You know, capitalist America was the Babylon and communism was going to wipe that out. Um, and they were going to build a kind of new system that was free of that kind of stuff. Um, I, you know, I always had a, um, I always had a sneaking sympathy one time I was at college and, and um, the, the teacher was saying, um, you know, somebody's explaining Rome as as the Catholic Church, and I said, "Well, actually, you don't want to you want to ditch that idea quite so quickly. Why? Because, well, certainly in the Reformation, the, this whole idea of that Babylon, you know, the the mother of prostitutes and abominations of the earth, was the Catholic Church. You know, there it was. It was rich. It was powerful. It was oppressing the saints. There it was. It was Babylon. So Protestantism was their way of leaving it. Or you could say, well, actually, the Anglican Church. I put their little nice little Freemason symbol from the roof of St. Paul's Cathedral, you know, again, well, maybe that's it. You know, the, the Anglican Church, you know, there's money, there's power, there's oppression. You know, that's Babylon. And and actually, um, certainly the, the, the kind of uh, house church or the new churches in the 1970s says, you know, leave Babylon. And what they meant by that was leave the established church, leave the Church of England, which I haven't got around to doing yet. Um, but, you know, they're... There they are, Babylon. They've, they've, they've got money, they've got power. And like the, the final thing, which actually could be like either side of it, you know, there's Islamic State. The the whole non-Islamic uh, capitalist system is a kind of Babylon. And there you go. You can you can get out of it. You can you can create the Babylon free zone by coming into Islamic State. Or maybe Islamic State itself is Babylon. And there's a whole load of stuff about that. So there's a whole load of different ideas about what Babylon is actually means but the question is like how do we in this kind of rich free uh country apply that idea of babylon where like the british government isn't killing people for being christian which is one of the features of babylon you you really want to like kill or oppress christians 
So um, let's first have a little bit of a look. Um, you know, what, what do we actually mean by Babylon? Well, th there you go. You can see that again. And you've got this um, Isaiah revelation pair up. It says, Isaiah, it says, you will take up this taunt against the king of Babylon, how the oppressor has come to an end, how his fury has ended. And there is in Revelation with the kings of the earth who committed adultery with her and shared her luxury. See the smoke of her burning. They will weep and mourn over her. So you've got some of the things right there. You've got wealth. Babylon loves luxury. Babylon is, you know, is 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 really into this. I mean, you know, as you may or may not know, I sometimes compare Santa to the whore of Babylon because, um, you know, he's into luxury. Conspicuous Christmas spending goes up every year. Check out the stats, people. Maybe it's not a coincidence. But but Babylon it loves luxury. The second thing is, it, and and it has wealth. The thing is, it's powerful. So it's a, it, it, yeah, it is a capitalist system. It it is a powerful, militarily powerful system. It is an oppressor. It it, it, it brings the, all of the nations of the earth together. And that's why Babylon is Rome. In the book of Revelation, Rome itself is not necessarily Catholic Church, or the Catholic Church could become like Babylon, as could the Anglican Church, as could anything that's closely associated, particularly something that's closely associated with the state, um, as it shares with the power of the state, the wealth of the state, and Babylon also has this kind of religious feature to it. You'll see um, in Isaiah 46, you'll, you'll see that actually it is the gods of Babylon, Baal and Nebo, who are, who are being mocked. That Babylon has this religious feature to it. And there's a kind of perverted religion that it claims. And so it creates this system. And that's why there's this idea that... Um, you know, the, the sort of white capitalist system, uh, the idea that all capitalism, the idea that non-Islamic states, the you know, and so on, all of these can be Babylon. They, they have these features of wealth, oppression, a kind of system that they apply onto the world. And but obviously, and that is the world, the world, as Jesus says, the cosmos, a human ordered system that is oppressive of and rejects God's people. So I guess one of the big questions here is, is not just sort of what is bad, but how do we get out of it? I mean, how, what, like, where the heck are we going when we leave Babylon? And so leaving Babylon, again, the Isaiah and Revelation type, you got to leave Babylon. you got to get out of Babylon because otherwise you're going to sort of share in the punishment of Babylon. So how do we do it? And I think that's the big thing. I mean, if you're going to make sense of leaving Babylon, you've got to have a clear idea of where we're going. So in other words, having that idea of the kingdom of God and, and what the kingdom of God is and almost like what is the kind of perfection of humanity that we're driving at. It's things that's going to tell us how we're going to leave Babylon. It's going to throw some light as well on how we can actually use and understand that idea of Babylon right now where we are living in peace and freedom and not having the blood of the saints being sort of poured out in Piccadilly Gardens. So the, let's, I mean, those are some of the kind of flip sides, you know, of, of like, what is the Babylon free zone? You know, and for some people, you know, America is Babylon free because it's free, you know. So there you go. That's it. Haile Selassie uh, obviously didn't believe, wasn't a Rastafarian, but, you know, people believe that if you could go there, you could go to the kind of free African nation that will give you freedom. I mean, you know, the Westminster, the Westminster Assembly, they're you know, getting rid of root and branch, getting rid of the Episcopal system, getting rid of bishops, um, Islamic State, we're going to create a perfect state. And some people is like kind of hipster bakeries and that kind of stuff. In other words, there's a whole kind of similar thing if like that Babylon is something in these ideas that is almost that is done to us. This oppressive thing isn't something that we do, it is done to us. And so what we have to do to escape Babylon is that we have to sort of create employment opportunities. We've got to create a, an Islamic state that's based around God. Um, you know, we, we create a, a pure capitalist system that's 
free of sort of communist oppression or communist system that's free of capitalist oppression um, or you know some sort of uh, a, a racist free environment um, for the first time in history we've never seen one of those I don't think but so all of those are going to be sort of post Babylonian systems and the big question that we always used to ask is well where are they where where are these things and I think the big challenge for the church right now is to show what that means if Babylon is real if Babylon is an oppressive thing what does it mean to live beyond Babylon what is the horizon that we're looking at that was the question the communists could never ask answer I mean you know was, um, I remember asking a, a kind of pretty Islamist friend of mine it kind of you know, where do you see the perfect Islamic state? And he said, well, Britain, because of its sort of NHS and social security system, which surprised me. I've never thought of Britain as an Islamic state. But, I mean, that was that was almost his idea. Well, where, where am I going to find perfection? So none of these things, I think we're going to say, are the kind of Babylon free zone. I mean, now, and this is where I think we've got to look. We can look for Babylon as we look for the Babylon free zone by looking at what Babylon stops us doing. So if Babylon is the world, loving the world prevents us from loving God and loving one another. Now, I mean, how does that happen? One is as we become attached to our stuff, those things that we have, we cannot love our brothers and sisters particularly our poorest brothers and sisters because we won't help they're going to be in poverty and we're not going to be doing anything so babylon this system of wealth and luxury makes us spend stuff on ourselves that we're not spending on the worldwide church god's goal for the church is intercontinental equality he wants us to be a community that is distinct from the nations and even in so many ways sort of economically distinct from the nation states in which we find us. When we spend on luxury, and luxury, of course, the way we define it is, is an ever moving thing. You know, tomorrow's, yeah, today's luxury is tomorrow's necessity. Um, what that means is, is we spend that money, we're not giving it to, to our poorer brothers and sisters, therefore we're not building Jerusalem. We're not building this community of love. And as we're not doing that, we're not loving God. The other thing is, of course, is we love the world. We're also becoming sort of spiritually blind, is that we're not capable now. Um, as, you, as you go to that, this is again um, from Isaiah 48. He says, he says, Come out of Babylon, the Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. They did not thirst when he led them through the deserts. He made water flow from them, for them from the rock. He split the rock and water gushed out. So the idea is as you move out of this love of the world and the world's expectations of you, the spirit comes. So you love your brothers and sisters by not participating in the wealth of the world, by not locking into um, these political systems is the be all and end all. You know, this is I'm, you know, I'm a poor Christian, but I'm poor by English standards. Well, a poor Christian by Indian standards, well, that's a completely different thing. So we're brought into a political system that allows us to say that. We've, we've agreed with the world's definition that it's entirely right for a Christian in India to be poorer than a Christian in the UK. We've, we've bought into that. We've loved our money. So we haven't loved our brothers and sisters. So we we have therefore made it more difficult for us to love God because we, we can't say that we love God and yet not love our brothers and sisters. In other words, by buying into political systems, by buying into economic systems as they are ordered, by living within the expectations of our society, we have therefore come into Babylon. And I think the point of all this is that actually there is a destruction coming on Babylon is that God, God's kind of purpose and his mind for the world is that we should be a people who are united and different and, and showing what it means to live with a different mindset, with a free mind, with a free economic system, um, 
free of, of the world's values that, that credit us with entitlements and therefore free to love one another. And, and that space where the spirit is in us, where we love one another, where we're free of our money is the Babylon free zone, I would suggest, that all these other systems, Islamic State, you know, sort of the, the move for a sort of a non-racist tomorrow, um, capitalism, none of these things can actually help us love one another. They don't actually make us what we are supposed to be. So there you go, from the matrix, free your mind, free your mind from the Babylonian system that says it is, it is acceptable for the church to live with massive inequalities of wealth, that your wealth is your own, that tomorrow, today's uh, luxuries, tomorrow's necessity, step out of that Babylonian system, love one another as Christ loved us, receive the Holy Spirit, and, and show people what it's like to live in that kind of fertile, God-given uh, sort of paradise that that should be our church and that church will show people what god is going to recreate when he comes and and destroys babylon at the last judgment so there you go those are my notes on babylon um hope that helps maybe if you disagree or agree or whatever so a comment there um john uh, i'm just going to pray for a moment lord i pray that you would set our minds free that we would not be children of babylon but children of your heavenly kingdom. Amen.